It's time for Horse Club! <laughs> Everyone say hi to Jen. Hello. So, huh, what do we got? It's nine degrees. It's windy. Uh, that's, that's what's going on over here. It's uh, 25 in my room currently. <laughs> that's what temperature oh, my, uh, my computer is running at. Yeah, or, or this, this thermo thermometer is, is, is broken. <laughs> I think that's probably more likely. <laughs> so. Doesn't, doesn't feel that hot. Uh, this is Jen, a.k.a. Mango Hello. Pixel. She does a bunch of work with Lur doing little animated things or mm -hmm. uh, graphics for mm -hmm. various streams. Like that one, actually. Oh, yeah. In the corner yeah. of the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's one. The little bug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we are going to... Well, Jen is going to show us some stuff with Illustrator and then animating elements in After Effects, which is mm -hmm. a compositing tool for people that don't know. Uh, and I'm going to try try to use Illustrator for the first time in my life, which is <laughs> <laughs> terrifying. You have no it's... idea. Like people get intimidated about like Blender and like the keyboard <laughs> shortcuts and stuff, and I'm just like. I don't even know what I'm touching in Illustrator. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the issues with the Adobe products is that they're all deceptively similar to each other. Yep. So if you know Photoshop, you sort of jump into Illustrator and go, oh, yes, I know how this works. This is, wait, no, it doesn't quite, nope. quite work that way. <laughs> so, same, so. same between like Audition and Premiere or yep, yep. Premiere and After Effects. It's just like... Yep. Oh, this is a timeline. I understand this. And then, no, it's not. No, yep. it's not. <laughs> Silly goose. <laughs> ah, but, anyways. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, right now, Jen has uh, some of the graphic stuff for the uh, PBR. Yes. Oh. So, the, the, um, I have been doing the, the intros for the various PPRs for a while now. Um, and this was the kind of source file for the one for Streets of New Cabana. Um, uh, in this case, actually, I um, then took this, generated an SVG from it, and imported that into Blender and did like a fancy metal 3D version of it. And that's what ended up in the final thing. But this is where I started. Started in Illustrator. Uh, just building building vector shapes, um, um, and uh, and text elements. So yeah, um, I can show you a little bit about how all of this was built. So a lot of these elements. So for example, this the the um, uh, like set symbol thing. I literally imported the image uh, <laughs> of. The set symbol from from um, you know the MTG Wiki or whatever, right. and uh, image traced it because <laughs> it is already a vector, uh, you know, a fairly vector like thing, um, and it never need it. You know, I don't I don't need it to be a very uh, accurate representation of the original thing. So um, there's a there's a wonderful tool in in here uh, called Image Trace. Oh yes. If I bring in an image. What have I got that's perhaps relevant? There we go. There's a here's an image from ages ago. This was part of my animatic of the minor clock intro. Um, and if once you have an image in, you can go image trace make, and it will. Uh, attempt to trace that image uh, with vectors. So in this case, uh, it's just doing a black and white, uh, a black and white thing. And you can go, you know, six color version or whatever. Uh, 
And then when you expand, they then exist as separate vector objects, each bit of color. Oh. So anyway, but <laughs> so that, that so that's how I got that bit. Um, uh, the text is just text. Uh, I found a, a you know a, a fun font that has um, a bunch of uh, uh, alternates. So for each character, there are lowercase and uppercase versions that uh, 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 are different. Um, picked the ones that I liked uh, working uh, together uh -huh. um, and uh, built them in place. And then everything else is built from uh, basic shapes. So let's try and grab this out as an example. There are a bunch of basic shapes that you can place. <laughs> Running out of space. Um, and can then quickly build up designs. In this case, things like this. Uh, I forget how I did the, <laughs> the swoopy side bits. Um, but then once once you have uh, um, uh, shapes like this, they can be combined together in a Boolean style using Pathfinder, which is this thing over here. Actually, hold on. So you can make like this a union or a intersection or so diff them? The, yep, you can go uh, union, um, the subtraction one is whatever object is on top is subtracted from the one underneath. Um, and intersection uh, is literally actually yeah, the intersection. And then it, there's also exclude intersections, which is less used. But the, these these three I use sort of all the time. Right. Uh, and so in this case, you know, I want to intersect those two. I'm just going to. I'm just. Pa plus. I'm just pasting a new, a new version of this top circle each time because each time it, you know it uses up the circle. That's how I built that up. Wow. So. <laughs> Maybe up here. There we go. Trying to keep us off the top of the controls. Ugh. I I am uh just I'm working on a logo. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So uh, once you have text in there, and once you're sort of happy with uh what font you've got, you know, um, uh, spacing and all of that, sizing, um. You can then actually turn those into vector objects themselves by going uh, type. Is it type? Type. Oh, I can never remember where the damn thing is. Uh, uh, type. Type. Create outlines. It is just there, yeah. Type, create outlines, and that turns that. I see uh, it. Shift control, into, though. Uh, All right. Control, yeah. Got it. And that, that turns it into a normal vector object, and so you can then go forward and uh, move uh, them independently. Yeah. Uh, let's get rid of this nonsense. Um, so that's what I've got up here, actually. So this this down here is all text objects, um, and then I copied the entire thing up here just so that I had so that I had that down there as a backup, um, and then turned all of these into um, uh, individual vector objects. Cool. So yeah. Uh... Um, and then objects can have both a fill and a stroke. Uh, 
And the stroke can have a number of different things. You can go dashed strokes and uh, all the rest of it. You can put it inside or outside the line. All of these are kind of things which, you know, uh, if you've played around with the uh, layer style stuff in, in Photoshop, they'll be familiar. But again, they operate in different ways. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What are we going to do? Uh, Well, I've put a, a, a good work star behind Atomic Sands uh, mm -hmm. text. Yep, and, you sure have. Uh, <laughs> if I wanted to make all these things move in a cool and interesting way, what would I do from here? So, um, once you're happy with the, the your basic design, you can save the entire thing as a, as a .ao file. Save as... Ah! Save on oh, my yeah, computer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Creative it's Cloud is cloud uh, a monster. Yep, yep, absolutely. I've I currently hidden that. my 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 shame from the audience, so Oh I see. <laughs> okay. Oh yes. <laughs> Versus Club. Alright. Space yeah. horse dot I. Yeah. If we jump over into After Effects, which I've already loaded. Yep. Uh, do I care about what version of Illustrator? Uh, just whatever the latest one is. Okay. Uh, it'll be fine. And After Effects. What's kind of fun is actually the, the, the .ai uh, file format is actually a variation on PDF. Rude. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, .ai files that you can literally just you know rename them .pdf and they'll open up in in some PDF readers. <laughs> okay, so make a new project. Yep. Oh, so you you you, you should already have uh, when you boot it up, it ends up with a, a blank project anyway, like this. Um, uh, so the way After Effects works is you have your, your project window, which is all of your source files in here. Um, and then they get put into compositions, each composition being uh, typically each sort of shot in a, in a, in a, a thing will be a different composition. Um, or it may be a, a smaller element part of a, um, uh, of a shot, and those are called pre-compositions. Um, but just need to import into here. Um, oh, yeah, no, I'm import not showing anything. kind composition? <laughs> um, or footage? So, uh, yes, just footage. Um, you can import them as a composition. We don't need to in this instance. Um, I just need to do footage, merge layers. Okay. Uh, and now they exist. So what we want to do now is create a new composition that is the 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 thing that we're going to be putting it into. If what we had was a piece of footage that we were bringing into here, you could take that um, uh, and I believe that's behind my camera, so Let I can't see. Again. <laughs> going on a journey. Woo! Um, yeah, so you can take uh, take take the file as it is imported and drag it down onto the the new comp button. It will create a new comp that is the size of the thing that you've already made. Um, uh, in this case, I'm because the size I deliberately made this a, a weird size, so I'm just going to create a new new one from a preset. Uh, dragging and dropping uh, any source file onto the timeline will add it in as a new layer. Um, that's mine. Yep. Uh, now, by default, they just come in and basically are a sort of uh, uh, basic rendering of that vector file as normal pixels. Um, if you turn on this flag here, Zoom in. Yes, thank this, you. This this flag here, the, the, the one star one. 
the little star one, the one between the uh, What No Bananas face and the Slash. Um, <laughs> uh, that means it will, that's what it is. <laughs> um, that means uh, this layer will continually re-render at whatever size you set it at. So now, if I were to scale this layer up, it would continue to render it at the larger size. Okay. So it stays crisp at the at the um, uh, uh, at the downside of it, you know, taking more processing power or whatever. So that's one way that um, uh, vector files from from uh, Illustrator can be brought in like this. But obviously, that is still one monolithic uh, uh, layer. Yeah. Uh, so what you can actually do is, if you right click on the layer and go to create and create shapes from vector layer, Ooh. it will create uh, shape layers, which are uh, a particular special kind of layer in in, in After Effects, uh, which don't have any source, um, and should convert everything into After Effects. Yeah, so that 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 has, that has brought that in for you. Yeah. Just get this big yeah. group thing, and I can select all the different. So you have all thingies. of those. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, 125 groups in my particular <laughs> one, just because it's got a lot of lot of elements in here. Um, but at that point, you can actually just delete the original AI file oh. and even out of the <laughs> out of the um, the project thing as well because you literally have converted everything over um okay, that's magical certain... and terrifying yeah. <laughs> yeah it is kind of um uh there are certain things that you can't uh um uh, uh import that way um text it, it's always best to turn text into um in, into the into full sh vector shapes yeah um to do this otherwise because i Sometimes it imports it, but not always. Um, and certain more complicated gradients and things like that that, that you can do in, our, in uh, Illustrator will not get converted into here. Um, uh, so yeah, now we have all of these separate uh, shapes. One of the problems is that it's now identifying what each one of these things are. Is it easy uh, to select them on the, like in the preview window? Uh, well, the problem is that if selecting in the preview window, uh, it uh, only selects the entire layer. There might, there might be a way of selecting within the. I think you can control layer. click. Like, yeah, something, something. Oh yeah, no, you did double click. Um, we'll jump inside and we'll select the thing. Uh, So actually, I'm going to get rid of everything apart from this element on mine. All right. Um, so within within each uh, uh, layer in After Effects, um, there are a number of things that you can animate. Um, you can change an animate or anything that has this little stopwatch icon next to it is an animatable um thing um so we can animate over time the position so if you click on the stopwatch it adds a keyframe keyframe uh, and then we jump ahead to a, another random time and change the position it's, it's kind of hard to do with this magnifier but i think it <laughs> helps illustrate what i'm doing a little better um And now it will animate over time. Uh, so I could do a thing where I Uh, oh, hold on, I've got to... Hmm. 
I have a very silly anchor point for this because, of course, this wasn't in the center of my <laughs> of my original image. So, if I redo my anchor point to a much more ah. sensible place. Now, <laughs> it's still it's still a bit off. It's still a bit off. Um, Circles are hard, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, you 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 build the you build the things in Illustrator with it, the thing in mind for what the end animation is going to be. I never planned for this to do this and so it's it's uh, uh it's all wonky <laughs> but uh, i could i could you know i could fiddle around and try and find the actual the actual midpoint of this and fix that but um yeah so uh, uh a useful thing uh, particularly if you have a layer with a bunch of different effects on it that uh, you want to be able to to um uh, uh, sort of differentiate, and also if you've got a bunch of different layers or whatever, you probably don't want to be opening up this entire spinner of of parameters every single time because there might be more than this. Um, and so, if you've got a layer selected, there are certain uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use to jump to to show only certain ones. Oh, cool! So P, 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 for example, just shows the position. Oh, nice. S, S just shows scale, uh, scale. Uh, R just shows rotation, uh, T just shows a passive T. <laughs> and then how do I undo that? How do I get out of that? Um, so the, uh, uh, there, might, there might be a, uh, a thing for show all, but uh, the way I always do it is just close the spinner and then reopen the spinner <laughs> and it shows everything again. Ah. Um, uh. <laughs> Um, you can also, as you're doing that, if you hold down shift, it adds it to whatever the previous one. So if I want to only look at position and uh, position and scale, you go P, shift, S, and it shows position and scale. Oh. Um, there's also U, which shows anything that has uh, keyframes already on it. So in my case, that just showed rotation, because that's the, the only track that I've got keyframes on. Can I parent things inside the group to each other, or do I have to that's take a little them out? That's a little. So, um, uh, what uh, I often do if 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 I'm doing this method um, is I will actually take the entire layer and duplicate it, and then uh, within each layer, so e e each. Um, each element that I want to be moving independently of each other, uh, I will put in its own layer. Okay. So in this case, if you want to have your, you know, the the star and your words space horse um, uh, as uh, separately uh, elements, then uh, you'll want to duplicate it, and on the bottom layer, delete all the words space horse and leave the star and then on the top one delete the star and leave leave space horse ah what i want is my stroke for my star to follow the the uh, fill but uh yeah what i could do is just animate from oh, the, well, the yeah, higher oh, level. i see what you mean you can create oh excuse me <coughs> oh dear um you can create new groups so if you if you click just on contents at the top um, and then add uh, over here. Ah! Group empty. That creates a new group, and then you can drag stuff into that group, and it will then have its own set of transform controls. Excellent. Uh, separate from everything else. Cool. Let me. Yeah, um, and interestingly, uh, the while the layer only has. Uh, this limited uh, selection of, of controls. The groups themselves have a couple of extra ones. They have skew <laughs> um, and skew axis. So you can do fun. Uh, uh, actually, it'll be in this one that I've already got. 
you can skew things around. And wobble the axis around. Alright. Whoop! <laughs> yep. Yep, that's the higher level thing, not the lower level thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I wanted at all. <laughs> so actually, I'm gonna do something slightly different here. Create a new thing that is just these. Whoop. Yeah, I'm gonna use elements. Not you, just you. Yeah, because all um, originally in this file, when I converted all the text over, I also turned all of the strokes into fills, ah, um, which you can do with path outline stroke, um, because that's what made sense for then turning it into SVG and turning it into uh, putting it into Blender, and then making it into 3D stuff. But uh, this time, I'm going to keep these all as strokes. Um, so these are all stroke objects with no fill. Uh, I'm going to do something with this. And our logo art deco. Import that. Wee. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Trust me on this. <laughs> okay. Um, so now all of these elements are a have a stroke rather than a fill object within them. Um, the shapes, uh, shape layers in After Effects are quite powerful. You can do a lot of stuff with them. Um, just, you know, uh, even from like you know very basic stuff of having multiple strokes that you then assign different colors to, in order to have. Uh, Sort of multi-tiered strokes, um, and you can sort of link all those together in interesting ways. Uh, but one of the best things is that it, uh, this kind of works like a a, a stack, <laughs> essentially, like a sort of programming stack where you can you can build up various. Uh, um, processes on top of uh, uh, on top of your your shape data. Right. Um, so I can't do this with the magnifier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just impossible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for example, there there are all of these um, things which are all sort of operations that you can put on on shapes. Um, so there's the pucker one, for example, uh, which uh. Sort of morphs things, sort of pulls things in or pushes things out. Um, actually, that one makes more sense if I show you it on like a square. Uh, add. Oh, no, that's a repeater. Pucker. Or pucker and bloat. So it sort of it takes straight edges and bends them one way or the other. So that's kind of fun. Okay. 
and those are all animatable uh animatable things so you can do you know twist And they all maintain. This isn't like adding a a normal effect on it, like you would with a um, uh, a normal video layer. This is actually generating new uh, geometry, new new, new, new vectors uh, each time that these the sort of values change. Um, and this can be seen, for example, if you turn this into a dashed stroke. The dashes sort of recalculate themselves. If I do like long da long dashes like this, um, they sort of recalculate themselves as you change change the twist. Ooh. So you can get some wonderful effects. Um, okay, now I feel like everyone's just cheating when they do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too easy. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the this is the perils of doing a. <laughs> Here's the house and the sausage just made. <laughs> you know, thing. It's, yeah, you realize yeah, it's it's just a sausage. It's not. No, it's not complicated. <laughs> <gasps> So one of the ones on here that I use quite a lot is trim paths. This is great for animating things in and out. Um, and it essentially, um, uh, so if I just hide some of the rest of this. Hold on. Um, so there's our initial shape. And then you can sort of undo the the stroke of it, and then animate that over time. So you can do a right on or drawing on effect. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my favorite things with, to do with that is doing that with a circle. This is a very, very quick way of doing uh, trim. A loading Dubri. And then I'll make the start. Trim that. Put some easy ease on these. So whenever you've got um whenever you've got keyframes, if you just hit F nine, that puts a nice what's called easy ease on them so, so it's nice simple easy and ease out mm -hmm. uh, uh, smoothing to animation um, but anyway yeah so that's a bit slow but <laughs> you get the idea <laughs> you usually these that those sort of things are quite uh, fast and uh, if I were to uh, make smaller circle but with a larger Stroke, you can go all the way up to the width of the thing, and now we've got the sort of pie chart kind of animation. But because that's following the shape, that can go around any any complex shape. Yeah, anyway. and so, uh, and you can apply these at any point so before i was just applying them inside each one of these groups right um but you can also apply it at a at a sort of global level and each of these affects everything above it so this is now trimming paths for all of these lines so this is a so they all sync up so they will all sync up um uh, or you can change this to individually, and it will go through each one in order. Oh! So that that that's a good one for sort of drawing on kind of effect. Let me. Uh, 
run that. Spacebar is the preview animation button, by the way. I recognize that logo. So it's kind of... Uh, And that could easily just be a uh, like an eighties style logo, just in that. Just you know, if imagine you that. Change uh, the order of the the shapes in the group. Does that change yep. the order they? That'll change the order. Yes, it is doing it in. Uh, I believe. Yes, it's doing it literally in the order that it is. In here. Right. Ian just delivered me a. Uh... McMuffin that he made. So I'm going to uh, turn my camera off and, and just eat this noisily into okay. the microphone. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, it's like, you know, just give this a bit of a... Ooh, glow. Bit of a glow, and there you go. <laughs> you know, you can easily see that. Or maybe, maybe you know, let's go the full hog and put some scan lines on it. Ah, uh, oh, so it looks like it's rendered from a display. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, I want to do that before the glow. Why does that look worse? <laughs> There's a lot of uh, fiddling around with settings until I, <laughs> until they look good. Huh. <laughs> there we go. And so yeah, let it render. Well, that's one way of doing a nice basic effect with that. It literally just occurred to me that I kind of just yeah defaulted to the Lur logo instead of trying to come up with a space horse company. <laughs> yeah. I think they do heavy lifting, like they're in rocketry. <laughs> Although, yeah, coming up with the uh, coming up with the new logos is always it's always very fun. Um, just trying to think what would what would best what would best showcase what can be what can be really done here. Well, I'm just about done my food. <laughs> um, oh, yes, actually, I can show you this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, let's turn off all of the glow stuff for now. Uh, there is also the repeater. Ooh. Um, which... <laughs> Is a very powerful effect. It, it, it literally just, you know, copies whatever uh, was before and applies a particular transform to it. Um, so one of the best uses of this is in sort of scaling it. Uh, of course, it's scaling from the top left corner. Gah! <laughs> Silly origins. Yeah. Why is he doing that?
But you can end up with a uh, sort of faux 3D effect by doing this. Uh, which again, sort of very, very sort of 80s style, um, sort of in in the wake of uh, Superman coming out with their fantastic titles, um, which were done using a very clever uh, sort of streak method of, of photography. Um, there were lots of films that tried to copy it using worse ways of doing that where you just kind of repeat the image yeah. <laughs> a bunch of times. And so that's that's kind of what we get here. Um, Hello. Hello. Why isn't that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's uh, because I'm selecting the wrong layer. That is the correct layer. No. What on earth is going on, After Effects? Oh, I deleted it on the wrong layer. That'll be why. <laughs> okay. Rewind. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just doing the simplest thing imaginable, dropping the letters in. Yep. Actually, I might rename my groups so that it, I know what they are. <laughs> yeah, that can be useful. <laughs> oh no, I can't. I can't just change the name of the group. Uh, you should be able to. Just hit enter on it. Why? Hmm. Oh, uh, brain. I need uh, ideas, ideas. Um, <laughs> what shall I do with this? <laughs> Uh, rainbow colors. Rainbow okay. colors. Let's do rainbow colors. Um, so, uh, and that is a gradient. Oh, no, not a gradient fill. Gradient stroke on top of everything else. Just ignore the existing strokes. Above previous. Pow, pow. Now that's interesting. Why is that just red? Uh, start point. There we go. Well, 
Nice. Then cycle those round. Hooray. Uh, fast, real fast blur. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> So actually, uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of struggling to think of ideas to do with this for now. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is what I could do is I could show you um, one of uh, sort of walk you through one of the more complicated things that I've done, which was uh, not the previous pre uh, pre release, but the 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 one before the uh, uh, Kamigawa right release. Yeah. Uh, uh, would so you like can... to take a break first? Yeah, let's do that. Um, yeah, just because that's that's you know what After Effects is really good with is is sort of working with footage and stuff, and that was a project with footage. Okay. Yeah. All right. We will be back after some commercials. Chat, mm -hmm. please stand by. Welcome back, everybody. Jen's here showing us some After Effects magic but first <laughs> i have completed my logo so we're gonna watch that <laughs> kablam thank you thank you thank you everyone you. i couldn't have done it without you <laughs> Ah, uh, so here we are looking at something you worked on for the uh, Kamigawa pre-release. Pre -pre 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 yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so this was the again the intro for the Kamigawa pre-release, -pre um, which is the the first one where I actually uh, do, uh, hold on, we're we're losing your your audio <laughs> for a second. I think your your computer's trying to sort its life out. Uh, I think my computer is kind of struggling to run this After Effects file and also send you. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the issue. Um... <laughs> I can uh, uh, be heard after I was walking through some of this. I don't. I don't know. Just give it a second. Just breathe. Let the computer breathe. Do you still have Illustrator open? Okay. I do. I could close that. I could close like Slack and things. Okay, it's a little better. No. Uh, yeah, you, you sound like an angry yeah. dial-up modem. Oh, now it's all gone. <laughs> Okay. Um, let's, let's abort this plan. <laughs> okay. Has that now improved? Yes. <laughs> Back to human speech. Okay. <laughs> Wow, that's I. I wouldn't have 
thought that would actually affect them, <laughs> affect it that much. Okay, apparently it does. <laughs> Uh, that's a shame though, because I was gonna, yeah. Um... It was gonna be awesome, uh, not like yeah, <laughs> space first. <laughs> we hold on. Uh... Wow, I might be able to show you like bits of it by kind of reconstructing wow. it. Yeah, that's what I was People. thinking. Just kind of bring some elements bring... in. Yeah, yeah. Um... Just step back from the edge of, yeah. of full robot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, they were in here, weren't they? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry for the giant white screen, everyone. Uh, can I? change the background like is there a fill for the the canvas uh sort of um so uh i mean so one of the, the easiest ways to do it is literally just to uh add a big black a <laughs> uh, big black background to it um and that that is the only way to do it that will also export that way right um, but if you're just doing if you just want to do it like i've got on my screen here um where it uh uh, has a, a darker background for you to work off of. Um, if you go to File Document Setup and where you've got the transparency grid colors, change those two colors to dark colors. Um, and then go to View. Is it View? Uh, yeah, View Show Transparency Grid. About halfway down. What? All right. Yeah, and that should be a bit easier to work from. Uh, and if you really just want a sort of black, uh, you know, a, a dark, uh, uh, solid background, you can change those two colors to exactly the same color, and then, <laughs> then you won't get any grid. All right. I'm going to try using the paintbrush tool, which is something I've not really done. Mm -hmm. I don't, neither have I, to be honest. Wham. That's, um, you know, Illustrator is one of those things that can be used for a, a wide variety of different it's kinds of graphics. And that, that kind, those kind of graphics are not, uh, not ones that I've often uh, needed to do. I do a lot of sort of corporate logos and things like that, which are much more uh, rigid, more sort of you know based on typography and things. Hmm. It's a lot of tools. Scissors and a knife? Yep. <laughs> join. Yeah, you. Join up. Yeah, I joined it. <laughs> oh, is there like a paint bucket? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um... But if not, there are ways of... Uh... Yeah, I just want to of dealing with that shape. Fill this because yeah, because I mean, what you've got there is a fill already. There we you've go. You've created a shape that yeah, so yeah. You, can, you can fill the the inside of it. Yeah. Um, then. Uh, but what you've technically got there on the outside there that um, the 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 stroke that you've got is a fill um, is a fill in and of itself, and so what it is actually is is something called a compound path, um, which is a series of paths put together that each one inverts the previous. <laughs> um, so you have one outside and one inside path, and the 
inside one cuts out the hole from the middle. Can I combine them? Can I like simplify that? Uh, in what way? They are. If you want to sort of group them together, you can just select the both of them and press Control G to group them. <coughs> That's probably the uh, uh, the easiest way of uh, achieving what you want there. Yes. All right. Now I have Lur's perfect logo. Lovely. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Where got I? I may briefly have to go robot a bit again to <laughs> to import some things here. Okay. Uh, I'll see if I can. Uh, see if I can do this and then come back from that brink <laughs> before going completely robot. Yeah. Uh. Um, create shapes from vector layer. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Have I gone complete robot? No, you're fine. Oh, fantastic. So, so things, here we go. things set up on your end now? Yeah. All right. Let's look at this. So, this is one of the elements from that. Uh, this is Graham taking his glasses off. Um, this is the original that I was given. Yep. As shot. Looks like our work, yes. <laughs> um, so I you know, did a few different takes. Picked the one that I thought looked the best. Um, and, you know, nicely shot on green screen. Fantastic. With this shadow. D -d Don't talk to me. That is... <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we used to have special lights just for the green screen. Like, yeah. the light behind us so that the green screen mm -hmm. is fully lit. Mm -hmm. Actually, Studio A has that. We've got two lights just independently for the green screen so that this doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. We know so about this. <laughs> most, most of the other shots were fine. <laughs> Um, but either either the shadow was not quite as deep purple as this one, which you know is the, basically the same color as yeah. as some of the purples in here. So is you know, um, but this one was particularly bad. Um, and I can sort of uh, show you how that would have gone if I'd just gone with doing the sort of traditional green screen. Uh, yeah, the key which is yeah, just keying it out. Uh, which you know, I, I did use a key for for some of it. Um, That's not bad, actually. It isn't bad, but you see that yeah, that shadow is is still kind of uh, kind of prevalent. <laughs> um, soften it up. Something like that would probably be the best I could do. Uh, so instead, to get this shot, I manually marked it. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, yes, I I saw that coming, but yeah, just so here oh, is the because he's got the glasses thing. going through the space. Yeah, yeah. Oh. those are some nice masks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, I didn't bother up here because here was keying perfectly fine, so I just allowed the key to to do this bit. But it was yeah, all of this left hand side. <laughs> and we can see here, yeah, all of the key frames. Because each point is an individually tracked thing. Yeah, so e each one of these actually just represents an entire. Uh, mask. So each one of these isn't a isn't a, a separate point. Yeah. Um, so for example, this one, which is the glasses one, I did actually bother to name these ones. <laughs> the, oh, often I don't bother, but uh, because I'm doing so many of them, and um, uh... so yeah, there we go. There's a there's a little insight into um, some of the things that. Uh, you'll need to do in, in in visual effects from time to time and that's to manually manually mask things. It's either that or somehow remotely commit a murder, like just mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So now that you've isolated Graham. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh this is completely uh uh isolated it created a um uh, uh, background. Uh, one thing I will notice is that um, this this key is a little rough. <laughs> um, there are a bunch of sort of artifacts around here. We've got this sort of weird fringing and stuff. Um, I opted to not even bother trying to fix this because of the style that we were going for, <laughs> yeah. which is this sort of 80s style. And I knew I was going to be adding a bunch of glowy stuff on top of it. Um, and there are going to be lens flares and all, all sorts of all, all sorts of stuff that would uh, hide the crimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it doesn't need to be photoreal. Is basically the the, the, yes. the what what I uh, settled on on this one. But. So thinking what I can do with this. Um, so one thing I can do, I mean, obviously I, uh, I'll need to put him on in front of something. Um, on the actual one, I, I made a 3D background uh, using various elements that I made in Illustrator, uh, range them in uh, 3D space uh, because uh, uh, layers in After Effects can be 3D unlucky Photoshop where they're all 2D uh, if you turn on this flag here at the end the layer becomes a 3D layer and when you look at the um, position there are now three numbers rather than two and there are now three different rotations. Ooh. And so the entire layer is a still a flat plane, but that you can move and position anywhere you like in 3D space. Um, so I built that background from from those various planes, which I'd, I'd love to show you, but I believe that's probably yeah. the thing that uh, uh, the, the the complicated 3D backgrounds are probably what uh, is overloading the computer. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's just.
There we go. Let's just grab a random image from online. And we have a background. Yay! Um, and now we have a layer. I'm going to pre-compose this. Um, this is a way of uh, kind of collapsing collapsing a layer down uh, so that you can then continue to work on it without any of your previous work getting in the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind like of. it saves um, you from re-rendering and re-rendering everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's still be but hold uh, one second. Okay, we're good. Okay, <laughs> was that particularly bad? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> pre composing definitely a spike on the CPU there. Oh, uh, okay, um, uh, fine. Um, <laughs> but basically, what it does when you, when you pre compose a layer, it creates a new composition that just has that layer in it. And then puts that composition back in your original composition as a new layer. Yeah. So all of the complicated masking stuff is now safely contained within in in there, and I don't need to um, ever worry see about it this again. Layer having a... Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, let's let's have some fun. Let's. Uh, Do a bit of this kind of thing. Oh, we're making an FMV. Of course, the background needs to be dark for this to work. Not that one. And this is the thing I did before to do the, the scan lines, which is actually to add the Venetian blinds transition, huh. um, which normally does like this. Right. Um, and it's you know designed to do, you know, So you just kind of don't like transition it. You just lock it into you, a setting. You just, you just go, yeah, you just go a little ways um, and you can change the, the angle of it. Um, and then make it much, much smaller. Well, there you go. You got scan lines. There's also a feather that you can apply to it. So that it's not quite as harsh. And this is sort of how I did, uh, how I got my start in After Effects, is doing Star Wars effects. Um, I did the effects for a spoof fan film uh, called Star Wars The Emperor's New Clones. Um, which was uh, very, very fun to work on, partly just because you know, I'd never worked on a full production before. And it's a, it's a full, like, feature like film um, <laughs> that we that we made um uh but uh, it's all online if you want the if you look it up it's all on youtube what do i do with this i'm gonna just give it a bit of a glow Not that much. <laughs> I 
Um, and then the wave warp effect is great for normally it just you know applies like a just a normal sine wave or something. Oh, you can get doesn't... real chunky with wave warp. Um, but if you go the noise or smooth noise, um, were applied in very small amounts, just bit enough of a distortion to feel like huh. a hologram. Um, and then uh, uh, if at particular points you want the, the hologram to glitch or whatever, you can just add another one. Do a much larger noise, and then animate from zero where it doesn't. The effect doesn't do anything over a couple of frames to something. Back down to zero again. I'm on After Effects. You can do it. Part of the cards. <laughs> now, is that the I do this stuff while also streaming something? <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> maybe you should have tested that. <laughs> But it's going, it's going, it's just, it's, it's taking a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm just swirling my, my Lur logo. No. Ooh. Uh, I added the twist, but it's not applying to both things. Yeah, so it will my... apply everything, everything that is above it, so drag it down below everything that you want. It is. Okay. I'll just give you a second because it's uh, I think even your videos just chopping a bit like it's it's a gang robot again it has but it's better now Yeah, what you mean is to create a new group that has everything that you want in it. And then apply the, the twist below that. Anyway, there we go. That's now Graham as a hologram. There we go. Looks good. Yeah. That's kind of a first pass kind of thing. And then you would uh, sort of take that and add uh, extra stuff to it. <laughs> so like um, if we use, uh, what's it called? The... Just do this on a new layer. Oh, 
Radio fast player. Whoa. Pull it off to the side. And it's now as if it's being sort of projected from somewhere over on the left. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. Actually. Oh right, yeah, and I've been working at four K, that's probably why the <laughs> this is going so slowly. <laughs> I forgot they filmed it at four K. <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. White actually in this instance. Now, one of the more powerful things you can do in After Effects in terms of animation uh, is to use expressions yes. on things. So whenever you've got a uh, keyframeable value, you can also alt-click the, um, the stopwatch and instead type in some sort of expression, which is essentially just a JavaScript, uh, uh, a little piece of JavaScript which produces a value that is then used instead. Um, so here, for example, I'm I'm adding a uh, a roll bar effect by uh, using the current time and multiplying it by ten thousand, and then using that as the vertical offset. And that's probably a bit too flickery. Uh, <laughs> But then I also want to multiply it by some sort of Gaussian random function to give it a bit of a bit of randomness. So then it sort of flickers. And now bring that back in here into my 4K comp. Uh, this is a very rough way of doing this, but it works, should work.
and it's uh, it's it's surprising how a lot of the effects that I do are spending a lot of time working out how to make things look worse <laughs> in very particular ways. <laughs> And by that I mean trying to replicate things like uh, the noise and the 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 flickering or the 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 grain or whatever of whatever it is I'm trying to emulate. So in this case, um, I want to add I'm, I'm adding this kind of roll bar effect to uh, emulate the way that they did holograms originally. Uh, right. in Star Wars, which was to film the stuff, play it back on a CRT monitor, and then film the CRT monitor. Oh! Um, while deliberately wiggling the cable. <laughs> they, they, they deliberately like, like cut into the cable and made, made it a really bad connection <laughs> so that it would go off the <laughs> Um, and they like wave magnets near the the CRT, <laughs> all sorts of okay, things, you know. Fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so in this case, this kind of uh, yeah emulates the sort of uh, lighter bits that you'd get where. Um, certain parts of it to, to... It, it is where the scanning beam is currently at when the film is being exposed essentially uh, this is a very rough version of this effect it would require a lot of uh, a lot of finessing to get this looking right but uh, you can get the idea at least I love it yeah, and now that we have it as a separate uh, element as well, uh, this sort of white bar, which just like looks like this, yeah, um, can also be used. I could you know precompose that. Stand by for any roboting, yeah, just in case. Mm -hmm. um, and use that as the source for distorting the the whole image so kind of um, a masking yeah because uh, um there are effects that you can apply actually i'm going to do this in a slightly different way to make this work by pre-composing this entire kit and caboodle And then just working on this. Um, so you can use this thing called a displacement map, which takes a uh, it takes a, a an existing layer as its source. Uh, in this case, the precomp, and then distorts the layer depending on the luminosity of the pixels. Uh, so in this case, um, I also need to add black background to the whole thing to make this work. Anyway, yeah, so there we go. So as the beam of light passes, he's going to get squidgy. It gets it gets slightly squidgy, and you can do it. Only, it only needs to be a very subtle... Subtle effect. You see, there we go. As it sort of scans over his face, it very slightly moves it. There we go. Mm 
There we go. <laughs> mm. This is the sort of effect that you'd uh, you'd work very, very closely with the director or whoever. Uh, because uh, uh, a lot, a lot of these kind of visual effects contain a lot of storytelling in them um, that you wouldn't uh, otherwise think that that is sort of storytelling elements. Just in terms of like the the intensity of the effect, are uh, you know, are, are we going for a uh, a really glitched out hologram that you know, the really um, you know, crappy connection kind of thing, or is it, you know, much more smooth? Um, are there particular points within it that you want to have it fritz or whatever? Um, and of course, because this is modern sci-fi, we've got to have lens flares. Oh, like oh. five. <laughs> So there we go. <laughs> so mostly I do stuff with just the vanilla built-in uh, After Effects plugins, but there are a few plugins that uh, that I have bought that have been indispensable. And this is this is one of them. This is Optical Flares. Oh, um, nice. Which. Uh, to my video co-pilot, um, which uh, I mean, the, the the guy the guy who runs it, um, he's done things like the uh, end credit scene for the uh, uh, most of the JJ Abrams uh, uh, movies, um, uh, and just works on Star Wars and a bunch of things, and. Uh, and they do a bunch of tutorials and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Video Copilot is a fantastic tutorial site. Uh, and then I also have from them Element, which is a... ...3D... Uh, there are various ways of doing 3D within After Effects. Um, and Element is kind of designed to be a quick and dirty way of doing uh, of doing 3D stuff that it, you know it uses your graphics processor rather than rather than trying to render everything using the um, uh, using the CPU. Um, so it, it's really sort of kind of quick. And you can... Very, very easily add. 3D elements into the scene. Um, 
Ah. That's just one of the it's just one of the sample um uh the sample things they have in there. Um it's also really good for that it connects with the uh inbuilt text rendering. Uh, so, oops. Forget I'm still at four K. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now, if I add element onto this layer, choose the That's texture maps. Uh, path layer. Now to back in. Extrude. We now have Space Horse as 3D text. As it was meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, bell scale, that's how you do it. So yeah, the, the, some of the video come up, the, the, they're a little odd in that they have they essentially jump you into this entirely different interface. Uh, um, rather than working entirely within within the standard uh, artifacts huh. uh, layout, and it's a it's a little uh, it's a little odd. I mean, it, at least it's not like some some plugins which actually launch an entirely different program. Um, So yes, there we go. <laughs> so. Just one second. I'm going to give it a time to render. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to. Uh, uh, when if you go to the preview over here, you can change how much. You know, uh, the resolution of this. Uh, it's now not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> oh, now Space Horse looks cool. Hello. <laughs> Yeah. 
Here, and I'll add a little, uh, here. <laughs> Let's, boom. This is a loading ready run product. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> It's very silly. I'd buy their products. Yeah. All right, yes, I'm not doing anything with the uh with the lens flare. It's just sitting there. That's boring. Oh, yeah. Let's uh <laughs> stick it right in Graham's face. No, 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 no. I mean, what I was going to do is, again, using the um, alt click to add an expression, use the wonderful wiggle expression, which takes frequency and amplitude. Only needs to be bigger than that because this is a 4K image. Yeah. And then the all important motion blur. And stick it on top of everything because that's where lens flares should be. Because they're on the lens. <laughs> So they happen in front of everything else. It makes sense when you say it like that. <laughs> oh. In the future. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, the this layer can also have motion blur. There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Realism. <laughs> that's what we. That's what we're delivering here today. Yeah. It's very similar to you. You can really feel what that. Rotating space horse comic sound text is right in front of you. <laughs> in front of hologram Graham on a Imperial Star Destroyer bridge. Oh. <laughs> okay, I think we're going to have to stop with the the blinky flashy. The blinky flashy. Ah, uh, yes. This is this is a point. I do apologize. <laughs> yeah. Ah, but I was going to ask, since we're approaching uh, three at least, if there is mm -hmm. any other uh, kind of project workflows that you've, you've had to touch in the past that you wanted to discuss, or we can mm. just end it. Ooh, I don't know. Um, I mean, so... I've used a bunch of different things um, because, as as is uh, uh, as is the way with the, with a lot of this, is you use whatever is required by the job. Um, so, like three uh, D animation software, I have used three uh, D Studio Max. I've used Maya. I've used. Uh, I'm now currently using Blender. Um, I used. Uh, True Space 3D back in the day, um, <laughs> which was never heard uh, of that one. Oh yeah, no, that was great fun. That had um, you could output to a dot uh, a dot world file WRL the the uh, virtual reality web page language. Oh oh, I've used VRML. Yeah yeah. Um, I had to use SketchUp for that. Yeah. Uh, I've used uh, uh, Lightwave was one of the most the worst ones. Um, that was 
an awful piece of software to use. And that was the industry standard in the TV industry for, for many years. It was Lightwave. It was an awful piece of software. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, a lot of the workflows are just, you know, kn knowing knowing lots of bits of software and, and, uh, and thankfully they, a lot of them interoperate fairly fairly nicely um with the uh, uh, with the adobe stuff have you used any of the uh uh team collaboration things no no uh, uh i've i i've used some of the things that allow you to like embed after effects files into Premiere files. Um, it's like the, the linking thing. Dynamic yeah. links, yeah. Dy dy dynamic link stuff. Um, yeah, we tried that out when it first came out, actually, and it was caused us no ends of problems because it <laughs> didn't work very well when they first introduced this. Um, uh, but no, the, the, the collaboration stuff, uh, <laughs> a lot of the stuff I do, I do on my own. <laughs> I'm not working, not working within a, within a team that I need to collaborate. So. Hmm. Well, yeah. Not much. Uh, yes. Not much else to say, other than space horse. Space horse. All right, then. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm gonna thank some subs, and we'll see if like Chad has any questions. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, first off, uh, we got some bits from Pharaohbender, and Holsty Mage is a new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. And Frozen Capybara has been here for three months. Thank you for resubscribing. Uh Nothing, nothing. Space horse, space horse, space horse. Um, you can find Jen at Mangled Pixel on the tweeters. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and most other places. Is, for Desert Bus, we did a little bit of a show and tell showing the L cars display stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there is, that exists on the YouTubes mm -hmm. for your, yep. your viewing enjoyment. Um, and other than that, I say good day. What is going on here? What is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a very spooky section of my monitor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, good night, farewell, good afternoon, goodbye. <laughs>